then seek the ways of wisdom. She who danced when earth was new, follow closely what she teaches. of known as Lectio Divina invites us to engage with this engage with scripture in a deeper more contemplative way allowing words to speak to us and guide us through our thoughts and our prayers and our lives so let us begin with our breath slowing and deepening it allowing it to bring you fully present to this moment as you settle into the rhythm of your breath, see if you can draw your awareness from your head to your heart center. Breathe in this infinite source of compassion. Allow it to fill you in this moment. As you hear Ivan read the word of scripture, allow an image to come forward to you. Reading from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God's with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. You do not receive our testimony. 
If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And Jesus, just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Hear what the world hear what the word is saying to the church. Well, we're right on track for my sermon, so since we're running a little late, I might shorten it up, because you already know the answer. <laughs> so, uh, yes, this year, I think, you know, in, in who we are as Fairfield United Church, we should just play with this idea a bit, not be entrapped by just three, as Bruce said. And let's enjoy the Trinity a little bit rather than getting ourselves uh, tied up in knots. So I've pulled on some of my youth group um, roots, and that's why you're getting popsicles today. So um, let's distribute the popsicles if someone would like to help.
Well, there he was in thrifties. What other colors would, if you had options, and we were talking about Trinity, of course, we would get three, three pops, <laughs> three different colors, right? So I, I do know that the Trinity is a serious matter, but as Bruce pointed out, it's also very mysterious and complex. And if you're like me, you like to play with concepts a bit, and then sometimes playing with them kind of assists you to reimagine things. So as you're sitting, listening to the sermon um, today, just, um, it, just imagine how the popsicle is speaking to you. Another form of Lectio Divina. <laughs> so the image that came to me today was uh, in the scripture about Nicodemus is uh, that Nicodemus visits Jesus by night and has lots and lots of questions. Now, I know these dark nights when I'm seeking answers or trying to make meaning of my life. In the silence, in the deepest darkness is when... And it's when everything from the day has kind of drifted away and there seems to be some kind of space where I can discover something different, something new to be born. Now, sometimes this clarity comes in a new idea or an inspiration for a problem or maybe even a sermon. <laughs> Somehow I'm able to make the next great step. Not always, but I'm very happy when that does happen. In our scripture, Nicodemus has begun to suspect that Jesus has indeed come from God. Somehow, although he's not totally convinced. He has questions about Jesus, what it means to be born anew or born from above. The Greek phrase that's used here can mean either, but whatever the words are saying, the phenomenon Jesus is talking about is characterized somehow by being born of the Spirit. In this scripture, we're eavesdropping on a late night secret conversation between two people, and here Jesus' words attempt to persuade and share, explain Jesus' identity, his mission, and his interest to a well-educated re religious leader who has opened his heart and mind by that first encounter. To make his case, Jesus alludes to two scriptures, stories Nicodemus would have known well from his faith tradition. I suspect most of you know about the Israelites wandering about in the wilderness. Lord have mercy, I feel like we've been wandering for a very long time, living this story. Here, somehow, the Spirit leads them about in the de desert. And if you talk to anybody, they're going around in circles. The ge geographical distance isn't really that far. But the Spirit seems to lead them around in circles. So I feel a little bit uh, akin to those people. I also, most days, feel like a roasted marshmallow being so close to the Spirit. And somehow, despite all... Despite all these people live through, they are refined in the fire, and they make it to the promised land. So that's hope for me. <laughs> the story of Abraham and Isaac that is found in Genesis, the first book of the Bible as we know it. Now, you may remember the story of the father who was told to sacrifice his son. Having two sons, this gets a lot of airplay in my house, just so you know. How could God do that? How could God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? And interesting, once all the arrangements have been made and they make it up the big hill, or at least that's how it sounds like in, in, in or looks like in a lot of, um, a lot of artwork, they have to climb a, a great big hill. God stops at this action at the last minute both, I think, to the father and the son's relief. Nicodemus listens to these stories of his faith and has a new understanding of what they mean and a new life that's eternal. Now, if you were a church father and you were looking for evidence of the Trinity, 
you may find that it fits today. And as you've already identified, you've heard the spirit, you've heard a fatherly-like presence, and you've heard about a God. This passage lays out sort of the raw material like a lumber yard from which carpenters later build a house. In the scripture, we find three. Jesus makes a reference implicitly to God as a parent, explicitly as God's son and God's spirit. And as you know, the Bible is a treasure trove of words and images, and they can be used for the good or the bad. And we are called to seek wisdom. Knowing God in three ways is not new to people. It is not new to the people of Israel, no matter what our church fathers would have us believe. So why then, if you have any, why then do you think there was such an interest in a Trinitarian way of thinking? Cameron knows the answer to this question. The early church fathers are working really hard. They're working in a world that has a multiplicity of gods, and they're trying to convince the many that there is just one God. To support the Trinitarian thinking that, is, that includes a spirit that was present from the beginning of time, Jesus, who is a son and, ever, and an ever-present God, the church fathers rummage about in scripture, and they found Isaiah's vision of the world that is drenched in God's triune glory. Holy, holy, holy. So we also can't ignore our own gospels when we read the early disciples who found themselves in a person to person with Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. The good shepherd who seeks, finds, and saves the lost. Likewise, they encounter the Spirit after Pentecost. We can be sure that the early disciples found themselves heart to heart with God, the guide, the advocate, who makes the church possible and sustains creation at every turn. I think we wrestle with these concepts about who God is, who Jesus is, and how the Spirit is relevant our life, in our lives. A God who walks alongside us, calls us into right relationship with all creation. I think we do this every week. Think through all these images, and you might be able to construct a Trinitarian shape, one of a story of salvation itself, The one who sends, the one who sent, and the one who comes as an advocate when Jesus departs. But before we wander too far away from our scripture into the land of of doctrine of the church, I can't help but consider what happened in that dark night. I know the dark night, my friends when long-held beliefs of who God is or how God works in the world can evaporate or deconstruct, the foundations of something solid begin to disintegrate and crumble. I wonder about what anxiety or loss prompted Nicodemus to get out of bed, find his slippers and robe, maybe take in a late-night snack. I recommend Oreos with milk. It is my go-to. And locate Jesus. It couldn't have been easy. I can't help but wonder about his faith, what he experienced that would make him question and seek something more. Asking questions and seeking a new understanding of scripture is very culturally appropriate, a way of being for the Jewish people of faith. Deconstructing and reconstructing one's faith is risky business. And Jesus has made a fuss, as he normally does. He always does in the temple. And this time he did it the day before, when he was speaking about the kingdom come. And maybe the disciples were being watched. And that means Nick, who's now become a personal friend, was sacrificing it all by getting up and going. He was sacrificing his life, his reputation, leaving the echo chamber that would share with him what he already knew, and he was going behind enemy lines to be in relationship with Jesus. 
Once the seeking and the finding of Jesus, Nick listened to Jesus, who recalled the scripture stories of God's people, not the warm and fuzzy ones, but the messy ones. Ones that were shaped out of a complex relationship with God and God's people. And through this conversation, Nicodemus dies to himself, his beliefs. He walks the gap between the death of what he thought he knew into new life. Jesus, his understanding moves from black and white to color. We all know this place when we are in a deep conversation with someone. Ideas are exchanged, deep listening experienced. Holy, 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 we are on holy ground. We know this place where two or more are gathered, the presence of the holy is somehow revealed in the great I am. I am here, I am everywhere, up there, down here, and everywhere. God amidst the cries and the challenges of our lives, even in the shadows of grief and violence, a call of all toward justice and love. I am here, a glimmer of God living actively in our lives, creating and recreating us, redeeming us, sending us, guiding us, empowering us. I am here, a God of relationship, especially relationship across differences. Glimpses of the kingdom which happen in relationship, which aren't just doing something we do. Relationships are who we are. In relationship, person to person, neighborhood to neighborhood, group to group. When others are healthy, we are healthy too. If you're hearing echoes of what it means to be a practicing community sent as a sacred presence in the world, you are correct. And this is an important message to proclaim in an era era too often dominated by individualism, isolation, loneliness, division, a capitalist model way of being and consuming that's always celebrated. Holy, 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 take your shoes off, for we are on holy ground. Transformation happens when we are practiced how to be in relationship with people, with God, the Holy Trinity, who walks alongside us and calls us into right relationship. Amen. Let us sing long before the night. Oh.
Anybody need paper towel? No? So I wonder, is there a word or an image um, from the experience of the popsicles or the sermon? Any new thoughts emerging? Confirmation of what you already knew? Peace and love. love. Now you have some empathy for my uh, youth groups. Do you remember that one, Cameron? Getting popsicles in church? No. No. He can't recall right now. I also set marshmallows on fire, too. But I figured we couldn't do that here today. All right. I was struck and puzzled by Nicodemus' name. Here he is, a Pharisee, a leading Jew in the Senate, with a Greek name that means the victory of the common people. Nico, Nike, victory, diademos. Somehow it's, it's a validation of, of us, of, of every person, um, of the common person, that God is really comfortable. He's not just comfortable as a good theologian, fathers of the church, um, but ordinary people, their experience of him. And he wants us to, to puzzle on. That's good, Bruce. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. So the ordinary person, right? But think about his name. This is another sermon, right? That if he, he is a victor of people, my buddy Nick, right? And he has this revelation. It's victory for all people. Excellent. All right. Dough and substance, wonder and mystery, spellbinding spinner of atoms and earth, soul of the cosmos, person. Let's go. 
city.